Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, we'll be showing you how to send objects to an S3 bucket from your Raspberry Pi. In today's example specifically, we'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4B set up with a camera that will be sending images and some short videos to our S3 bucket in the cloud that we can access to remotely by the end of this video. So we'll be walking through that process end to end and we'll be using Python SDK to do this. And if you haven't, before we get into it, be sure to subscribe and follow the channel. And even better, consider donating to the channel on the Buy Me A Coffee link, link down below in the description. So we're just going to jump into it here and start with this AWS console here. So if you haven't already, make sure you create an account with aws.amazon.com. It is free to get started. They have a free tier. Although they ask for your credit card information, you will not have to use it initially. And once you're in, we're just going to come here to the console. And the first thing we want to do is simply create an S3 bucket. So we just want to go to the top left here and we just want to search S3. And we're just going to click S3 in the services tab there. And we are just going to create a new bucket. So we could just name it whatever we want. I'm just going to call it Raspi Bucket 2.0 because I've already done this before. So we're just going to do that. We're just going to scroll down here. Let me just move my head to the side there. And we're just not going to play around with any of these settings for now. That's beyond the scope of this video. And we're just going to create a bucket. So now that we have this Raspi Bucket 2.0, the next thing we want to do is configure users for this bucket. So this is also very important and can be confusing for some new people. So you just want to go here. Now you just want to search users. So we, we're going to click users there. And you can see I have no users. So we just want to cre uh, create a user by clicking create user. And the username will be admin. okay? But you can name it whatever you like. So we're just going to next, and we are just going to do next for now. And then we are just going to create the user. So as you can see, we have this Raspi admin user, but they need some permissions to be able to put objects into the bucket. So we just want to click this here. We just want to go to groups, and we want to add users to groups. So I already have this admin group, but in order to get you not confused, let's just go ahead and create a new group. And this group will have administrator access, so they can do whatever they want essentially in the S3 bucket. And we are just going to create that user group. And also we have to give it a name, so we could just call it Raspi admins. So we can just create user group. And then we can just add this user to the Raspi admins user group. So add user to groups. and now that we have that, the final thing we need are the security credentials for this user. So this will be used in the Python code. So let's just go to security credentials and let's go down here to access keys and click create access key. So you will need this information in the Python code, which I will show you shortly. And we can just click any option here. I just click application running outside AWS and that's fine. Just ignore that. We can just click next here. And the description of this key, we can just call it RAS key and we can just create access key and so now what we want to do is we want to save this information locally so we want to save the access key and we also want to save the secret access key so you want to keep this information as as hidden as possible because it does give people access to your bucket potentially so what you want to do is you want to copy it and once you click done you will no longer have access to the secret access key so once you click done if you haven't copied it or saved it anywhere you will not be able to access that information just make sure you save this information locally somewhere. I'm just going to copy it on the notes on the right here on the screen where you can't see. And we'll paste that in the Python code shortly, which we'll jump to right now here in a second. Okay, so the next thing you want to do simply after you have your S3 account set up with your user in your bucket is you simply want to mimic this code I have here. So I am signed into my Raspberry Pi and I am in the Thani editor and I have my Python code here. And in my Python code, it's a very simple code. I'm just using the time library. I'm using the, the Pi camera library because I'm using a camera and I'm using Boto3. So Boto3 is something you have to pip install as well if you want access to S3 SDK in Python. So you have to pip install Boto3. And I have some uh, exception handling here with no credentials error. And simply what's going on in this code is I have two functions. The first one is capture image. So I'm just capturing an image based on this resolution and I'm saving it to a file path. And the second function I have here is capture video where I'm just capturing a video and same thing, saving that to a file path. And really, if you're not using a camera, what you want to focus on is this code down here. So we have this upload to S3 function. So in this upload to S3 function, simply what we have is the file path, 
the bucket name, which you would have to substitute for the bucket name you created, and the object name. So you could just call this object whatever you want based on how you want to save it in the buckets. And of course, what's important here as we went over is the access key ID and the secret access key, which you want to keep this information as confidential as possible. But for this video, I'm just gonna keep it here. Uh, you don't really want to hard code in here as well. You want to have some other means of uh, obfuscating these values just for security purposes. And I'll just go ahead and delete those values uh, or those buckets and those keys after this video is uploaded. And simply what we're doing is we're calling S3 uh, boto3.client to create an S3 client and we're passing in our access key ID and our access key or our AWS secret access key. And then we're just we're running an upload, which is a, a function we can run on that object. And we simply pass the file path the bucket name, which we define, and the object name, which we define as well. And we do some printing here and some other exception handling, as you could see down below. Now, also, finally, what we have here is the main function. So this is just the function that gets executed upon this program running. So we just define some certain things, such as the desktop path, the bucket name, which you have to change here. And you also have to make sure you change the key ID and the access key. And, of course, uh, we have the capture image function, and we have the the capture video function. But really you don't have to use a camera at all when you're running this code. You can just have a simple image that's saved onto your desktop. I'm just using a camera for more dynamic purposes just to show you uh, potential real life applications. Maybe if you wanna monitor something in real life and take a, a photo periodically, that's something you can do. So if I go ahead and run this code, you can see I already ran it before from the, from the logs down below. I'm just gonna run it and I'm just gonna point to at some plants in my house. So I'm just going to run it here. And everything should work fine because I already ran it before. So just give it a moment there. So the first thing it does, it takes an image based on this code and it uploads it to S3. The next thing it does is it captures a video and it uploads it to S3. So now that that's done, we can confirm this work by going to the S3 bucket. So I'm just gonna go to the S3 bucket here on the top and I'm just going to go to my Raspi bucket 2.0, click that. And we could see that we just got this image and this captured video. So I'm just gonna open the image here and see what it gave me. Okay, so we could see it's loading there. It's a little slow on my Raspberry Pi. And I am just going to open it here. So let's see if I pointed it correctly at my little plant area. So looks like it downloaded it for me, which is, uh, I thought it would open it in the browser. Let's go ahead and open that. You could see I kind of pointed it at my plant over there. So yeah, I mean, everything looks good and the, the video, we really don't have to upload that because that's essentially the same video because I kept the, the camera steady. But I hope you got the gist of learning how to upload objects to S3 from your Raspberry Pi, which once again can have some significant use cases in IoT applications and just applications in general. So I hope I made it easy for you. If I did, please subscribe and like this channel. And also let me know if you have any questions uh, in the comment section down below. And even better, if you really liked it, consider donating to the channel to the Buy Me A Coffee link in the link down below. Once again, guys, stay tuned. Thanks for watching and take it easy.